Right. In terms of the ideas coming out of emerging markets that, that we need to look at, this Chinese idea of, um, of a, reserve, a new reserve currency for the, for the world, are, are you supportive of it? Um, or are you just uh, an observer and say that, you know, let's see what happens? No, I, I, I don't think the idea of the SDR as being the reserve currency uh, will, will fly, uh, simply because I don't think it adds that much to what is already possible. Okay. Uh, the will not fly today, will not fly uh, I, conceptually. I, it's I, I think conceptually there are limitations in the sense that it doesn't add much to what is already possible. Lots of countries clamoring for an SDR issue, but that's because they won't, the SDR issue is something like free credit. Okay. Uh, they get a claim. Yes. which they can use as and when they want, and a lot of countries want more credit. Right. Uh, but somebody has to pay for it. This is not... Similarly, uh, there are countries that are suggesting we be allowed to invest in SDR, but if you uh, be allowed to invest in SDR and swap your dollar holdings for SDR, uh, who's going to have the dollar holdings? And if the dollar falls in value, who's going to bear the currency risk? Right. Uh, none of this is spelled out, and this is where it all breaks down. Uh, the real issue for central banks is the SDR doesn't solve any problem because you can already invest in the basket that the SDR is composed of. Uh, and you have free choice in doing that. The reason you don't do that is because you're pegging your currency against the dollar. Right. And so you don't want to abandon the dollar peg. I think that the answer, at least in terms of having more reserve currencies, which I think is a good idea, uh, is for the renminbi to become convertible. And then a few years later, maybe throw that ten into years, the and throw that into the basket, and they will. It will happen automatically. People, central banks want to be diversified, and down the line, rupee, the rupee will also become a, a a international reserve currency. So, the Chinese, I think, understand this fully, uh, and are working, uh, in my view, to making it in some fashion. Uh, accessible as a reserve currency. Right. Whether it's through full convertibility, market exchange rates and so on remains to be seen. Right. But that would be one route. Right. Financial services industry and its contribution to the infrastructure, the global economic infrastructure, as the markets come back, the focus is again on, on the financial services industry. Um, what do you think are some of the, um, you know, the, the pitfalls that we, we need to be aware of? And in fact, in, in the U.S., um, where the, as the government, you know, makes the money back that it's invested into the rehabilitation program, it has to come from the profits generated by the financial services industry. So, how do you think that's going to play out? And um, and I guess part of the answer will, will also depend on on what's happening in the U.S. today in in terms of relationship between regulators and and the banks. Yeah, I think the financial sector industry has to come back. It'll come back a little more shrunken. Uh, it should come back a bit shrunken. I, I think it should come back and it probably will. Um, whether it becomes more concentrated and therefore it's more profitable, at least for a while, is, is something to be remains to be seen. Um, I think the um, important issues are, have we learned the lessons from this time around and have we regulated well enough that we've reduced the problem? I don't think we'll ever eliminate the probability of a meltdown like the current one. But have we reduced it in, in effective ways? My fear is that because it's coming back and if there are no further mishaps, uh, we will tend to do a little more of what we did in the past because that's the only thing there's any political capital for. We'll increase capital requirements, we'll, we'll apply it to mortgage-backed securities, we'll apply it to the trade book, and there'll be a few more small adjustments elsewhere. But the really big issues of did we did the financial sector overreach? How do we prevent it from overreaching? How do we give the regulators backbone at the right time? Those are things we will we will we will avoid. So uh, I think that uh, more needs to be done. Uh, am I hopeful that it will be done? No. Okay. Uh, I think that uh, uh, unfortunately uh, we may have to get a lot more political consensus, and it's now going to happen in the short run. Uh, whether it happens in the longer run remains to be seen. One final question I have to ask you on behalf of a number of emerging countries that, that, that have this concern. And I guess the easiest way to ask you this question is to say, do you think that the G20 is truly representative, although its intention is to be representative of um, the, the global economy as it stands today? Uh, my, my sense is the G20 is representative of large countries in the global economy. Uh, reasonably representative. The problem in getting a representative group is you have to weigh the uh, 
the forces of getting representation against getting a small enough group that you can have a conversation as opposed to speeches. Yeah. You can't get the UN General Assembly right. into no. a room and have a meaningful discussion. But at the same time, you'd like to create yes. groups. And so, so I've been pushing for the idea that the, international, uh, the IMFC, uh, which is uh, in a sense the apex body in the fund, uh, offers a good model. Uh, a model that needs to be changed to rep to adjust for the uh, changed economic power of different countries, but which has a number of seats which rotate amongst different countries. Uh, you could also think of some seats where there are elections amongst countries, but which then gives small countries and large countries all a seat at the table. Because right now it's very arbitrary. In, in, I mean, Absolutely, and, but this comes from the fact that the IMFC itself is not seen as a reasonable forum to have dialogue. So therefore the dialogue took place outside first in the G7 and now in the G20. We need to make the IMFC more a forum for dialogue and I've been arguing that what we need is a more ministerial level discussion at the IMFC, a true discussion as opposed to speeches to one another and it needs to be uh, sort of you know, more representative of the economic part in the world. So, uh, you know, Belgium has to have less of a less right. of a, this thing That's relative right. to China. Thank you very much, Dr. Most welcome.